My goodness, make some noise for the Lord Jesus. I'm just super excited to be here. Can you tell? I want to give honor to our host pastors. Oh my goodness, what an honor to sit next to Pastor Tommy Barnett and his wife. What an incredible couple. I am blessed. You are such a blessed church to have one of the most iconic leaders uh, serving you to this day. Would you give him another round of applause? And to the Barnetts as well, oh my gosh, I love Pastor Matthew, and I just met his wife. These are incredible people. Would you make some noise for Pastor Matthew? <laughs> he just pressed the cord, and I was like, Lord, have mercy. They're going to they gonna make me relapse tonight. Lord, have, oh, God, have mercy. And to my brother from another mother, Brother Clint is my friend now, man. I felt like I met a person that I've known all my life. Glad to have him here. And, of course, Tim is with me from Authentic Church, part of our team. I'm glad to give some props to my homie. All right, so we got to get into where. How many of y'all come to have church tonight? Not church. Church. It's a little different from church, all right? So you're going to stick around here the whole night, right? Good. Thank you. Good, very much. We're going to need you a little bit tonight. So let me give you a little bit of a prequel, okay, everybody? Because we're going to get into a New Testament book called Acts. It's about the outgrowth of the first century church. Plus, I want to shout out to all of the L.A. Dream Center people. You guys changed my life today, man. Wow. I love y'all. It was amazing. So let me give you a little prequel, okay? So here in the text, Paul is about to face some... Uh, he caught a case. Let's just talk about that, that way. Paul caught a case, and, <laughs> and him and Luke, <laughs> who is a doctor and is writing the book of Acts so that we can learn about the outgrowth of the church, are about to stand trial for their crimes to Rome. And they're going to Rome by boat because they didn't have Uber back in the days, right? So they're going by boat, and there's other prisoners on the boat. The Bible says about 200 of them are heading toward the place called Rome to stand trial. And all of a sudden, Paul gets this dream of sorts, and he stands up on this boat, and he says, Hey, everybody, take courage. None of you will lose your lives in Acts chapter 27, even though the ship will go down. <laughs> But last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God, it will be just as he said, but we'll be shipwrecked on an island. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of news I want to hear. When I was flying into L.A. just this week, I didn't want the guy in 17E standing up and saying, hey, everybody, I missed the beverage cart, but the God that I served showed up in a dream, and he told me, we're going to crash, but none of us going to die. I'm saying, get me to LAX safe, bro. But one thing that I love about this text is that we read in verse 44, if we could throw it up here, that the ship did end up falling apart, and all of them had to hold on to pranks or debris from the broken ship. And what I've come to understand is that we serve a God that doesn't mind breaking up the things that we feel secure in. That sometimes God's got to break up the things that we feel safe in. He's got to break up the things that we think are going to be the most secure. And sometimes God will use debris to get us to our destination. And I don't know about you, but sometimes God will get you to the place where your faith is the only floating device that you can use. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. So now we got the foundation, right? They told me I could be myself. <laughs> so, so, so um, I, 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 I'm here and I want to be authentic with you guys and I got to admit something to you, okay? Is that all right? Seems like we had testimony service and... Everybody's just cool with just authenticity. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I hate snakes. <laughs> Thank you. Like I legit hate snakes of all sizes, all shapes, and all forms. 
I do everything I can to avoid coming into contact with snakes. So a few years ago, I got an invitation to go to Montana to go fly fishing. And I was scurred and insecure <laughs> because I know Montana got snakes. And let me just keep it real, too. Black people don't go fly fishing. <laughs> when I got the invite, I thought they meant dress fly and go fishing. I'm of Jamaican descent, too. We fry fish. We don't fly fish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the first black man that's ever been to Montana. <laughs> you step off the plane in Billings, you're like, Wakanda! <laughs> but ain't no other black people there. It ain't Wakanda. I was walking around Billings one day, I saw this dude in a really dope shirt. I was like, yo, what's up, bro? It was a mirror. No other black people there. One day, I'm out hanging at this lodge and this snake comes out, man. And the guy comes up to me who's owning the lodge and he says, oh man, don't worry about that. Like, it, it's not a poisonous thing. as if getting bitten by a non-venomous snake is better than getting a bite from a venomous snake. Bro, who made you the snake whisperer? The only snakes I like have been turned into a purse or a wallet, some Stacy Adams shoes, you know them church shoes. If you got them on tonight, I'm not hating on you, bro. Snakes are venomous and so bad that if somebody calls you a snake in the grass, they ain't trying to give you a compliment, man. If somebody calls you a snake oil salesman, not good. So we looked at the ill-fated voyage of Paul and Luke and their crewmates that were condemned prisoners. They were shipwrecked but miraculously delivered by the power of God, just as he said. And they arrived on the island of Malta. Now, make sure you understand that Luke is a doctor. And so he writes with meticulous detail about all the things that are happening. And he says, once we were safe on the shore of Malta, we learned that we were on this island. And the people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on a fire, a poisonous snake, and even when I read it in the Bible, I just tighten up my glutes, man. I'm just like doing a standing plank right now, man. Driven... <laughs> driven out by the heat and bit him on the hand. Now, let me pause here for a moment because the detail is not a thing that we can look over. Luke is giving us details that are not mundane. Most commentators will tell us that on an island of that sort, you would never see a person of Paul's stature gathering wood and getting a fire together for other people. It was the work of women, or it could have been the work of children on an island. But what I love about this is that Paul has been shipwrecked. But he's still making a fire for other people. What I love about this is just before he gets bitten, he's still trying to serve other people that have been shipwrecked. I wonder if there's anybody in this house that realizes that you can still serve others when you're shipwrecked yourself. Is there anybody in this house that realizes that you can serve others while you're suffering? You can serve others when you haven't gotten over your own weakness, your own habit. Your yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you got to serve others while you're still suffering. Have you ever noticed that when things are warming up in your life and you're getting momentum and things are thawing out, that out of nowhere, something could just bite you? I feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of nowhere, something will get a hold of you. Out of nowhere, you'll relapse. Out of nowhere, that habit will come back. Out of nowhere, those friends will come back. Out of nowhere, a snake can bite you. Oh, I don't 
don't got nobody here. And the people on the island saw the snake hanging from his hand, and they said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. See, the people on the island were not like my snake whispering friend in Montana. They knew their snakes. And they saw people die from the same snake bite. And these were superstitious people. They believed in the multiplicity of gods. And so they're looking at Paul and they're like, oh, yeah, you got over that shipwreck. Ah, oh, but it's coming back to you. What goes around comes around. They're like, man, karma is a boa constrictor. What do you think I was going to say? I'm saved. <laughs> but Paul shook off the snake into the fire. He goes all Taylor Swift on it and just shakes it off. <laughs> and was unharmed. But look at this. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they waited a long time. They saw he wasn't harmed. They changed their minds and decided he was a god. There are some people in this house. Your friends have been waiting to see if you're going to backslide. Your friends have been waiting to see if you're going to relapse. Your friends have been waiting to see if you're going to hit the streets again. Your friends have been waiting for you to do others dirty again. But they're going to have to wait a long time. Because I feel I got 10 people in this house that are ready to shake off some snakes, ready to shake off some stuff that's been holding on to you. Come on, somebody in this house today, shake off your past, shake off your weakness, shake off your hurt, shake off your headache. Yeah. Listen to me. That's why tonight, you got to get your praise on. That's why tonight, you need to cut a little loose. I'll tell you why. Because people are watching your reaction. Let me just say it this way. The world doesn't read Bibles, they read Christians. That's why if you think I'm going to come to church and act all boozy, if you think I'm going to come to church and act like I don't got no, 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 baby, God has saved me, raised me up, did a work in my life. That's why I got to praise him. There's people waiting to watch you go backwards. There's people waiting to see if you're going to give up. But I wish there were some people in this house tonight that would start shaking that stuff off. I know it looks stupid, but sometimes you just got to start shaking stuff off you. I shake off those lies. I shake off my past. I shake off those comments. I should, come on, somebody shake it off. So, so let me hurry up, right? So, so y'all having a good time, y'all okay? All right, so, so near the shore where they had landed was an estate belonging to Publius. Publius is the head honcho on the island. He's Rome's representative. He's a chief official, and he welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius' father was ill with fever. Now, I told y'all, I'm of Jamaican descent, right? I'm from the Bronx. My parents are born in Jamaica, which makes me a Jamaican, Okay. But they, but they raised me like a Jamaican. So I was preaching this to my church one day, right? And I was like, has it happened? Who is his father? Was ill with fever and dysentery. Throw the verse up. With fever and dysentery. And this lady came up to me after church and said, hey, Pastor Wayne. That word is actually dysentery. <laughs> and I said, no. 
I said, God is going to work in this century, not another century. She said, no, I'm a nurse, and that word actually means diarrhea. And I said, why the Bible couldn't say the runs? I understand the runs. It's this century. But, but, but Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, whoa, I feel like preaching now. He healed him. Whoa, yes, I feel good. He healed him. Now remember, Luke wrote the book of Acts. This dude's a doctor. He's got more degrees than a thermometer. He's the MD. He went to med school. But what I love is that the Holy Spirit doesn't use the guy with all the credentials. He uses the guy with the wounded hand to start healing people that are sick. What would happen in this room if we had some wounded people that wouldn't just settle? What would happen in this place if you decided not to wait until you got your credentials? What would happen if you used your wounded hand and outstretched it to people? God's not looking for people just with degrees. He's looking for people with wounds, hurts, addictions that have been divorced. That have gang bang. That have weaknesses to heal people. Don't you ever be intimidated by your wound. Don't you ever be ashamed of the snake bite. And don't you ever let poison paralyze you. God's trying to raise up some people in this house today to do extra, yes, yeah, stand up, all right? To do exponential stuff in the name of Jesus. For every person in this house that's been wounded, hurt, discouraged, in the name of Jesus, be free and released. Here's why. Here's why. Because when one sick man with a wounded hand didn't withhold it God used him to bring healing because here's what God specializes in he takes us from shipwrecks he takes us through our snake bites to get us to sick people that's the trajectory watch this then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed notice when people started seeing something happen, they started getting attracted. You want to know what's going to happen in your neighborhood, homeboy? Just start extending your hand. You want your city to change? Start extending your hand. You want to see power? Extend your hand. You want to see an anointing? Extend your hand. You want to see God move? Extend your hand. You want to see power? So watch this. God takes us from our shipwrecks to snake bites <laughs> to sick people for one purpose. Here it is. As a result, we were showered with honors. And when, when the time came to sail, people supplied us. Some of you are worried about where your supplies is coming from. Some of you can't get over what happened to you in your life. But God said if you can get through your shipwreck, if you can get over your snake bite, if you can start helping me heal sick people, I'll get you to your supplies. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'll get you to some stuff you never thought you were going to see. I'll get you to some people that'll give you stuff you never imagined. And you'll have everything. Everything you need for your trip. You'll never be undersupplied serving a God that gets you through shipwreck and over snake bites to sick people to get you to your supplies. What if you could never get to your supplies unless you had learned what to do after your shipwreck? What if God is more concerned about getting you over your snake bite so that you could get to sick people for you to be ultimately supplied? No. <laughs> so, so he, he, here's the truth. I still hate snakes. <laughs> but here's what you've got to do. You've got to serve others. That's the key. The key in life is not to become me-centered, but to become other-oriented. So when you get over your shipwreck, you can help warm people at the same fire that you're going to need. You got to serve others. That's why I love the Dream Center. That's why I'm committing to you, Pastor Tommy, Pastor Matthew, to my church committing financially to helping to make a difference in the lives of other people. Because you got to serve others. But, 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 but here it is. I, I hate them. I hate snakes still. And maybe that's why I struggle with loving Jesus. Because he's a snake. We got quiet in here now. I seen some sisters back there like, uh-uh. Don't be talking about my God as if he's a snake. Pastor Tommy, I don't know where you got him, but he needs to go back to White Plains. <laughs> the sisters know about that. Sisters know about this. It's okay, we're a multicultural church. You can laugh at that. <laughs> uh, let me help you. Jesus is having a conversation with this guy named Nicodemus. He's really smart. He's got all these degrees. He's probably some seminary grad, but he doesn't understand the things about salvation. And so they're having this conversation, and Jesus is telling him, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. This guy's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus is like, man, como se dice born of the water and the spirit, homeboy? So, so Jesus has to draw him back to an Old Testament text. And he tells him, as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Jesus compared himself to a snake. Why? So we got to go to Numbers, an Old Testament book. And for those of us that have made Jesus Leader and Lord in our lives, it's that book in the Bible that when you get on your one-year reading plan, you go like this. That in Leviticus, you like, I need a word. <laughs> he talking about don't bring your sheep to the temple. I ain't got no sheep. <laughs> you going to help me in a little bit. So, so, I'm going to help some of y'all because I saw some of you dudes, and I can tell why y'all single still. <laughs> no, I'm good. Because you ain't got no swag yet. I'm going to have to help you with your swag. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to help you. Ah, you know. Let me just, so I'm going to help you, right? Because y'all don't know. So first of all, the lady's like, well, you post up right. You got to post up. <laughs> then you, 
got to get a little bobblehead action and moisturize the lips. <laughs> then you got to go up to girlfriend and just be like, yo, yo, what's up, girl? Yeah, 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 I saw you. Yeah, 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 girl, yeah. I saw you at the Dream Center, you know what I'm saying? And you were serving. I'm saying, and I'm in this Bible study, you know what I'm saying, with, with Pastor Matthew, we be meeting like every week, we in the book of numbers, you know what I'm saying, and yo, peep this, check this out, check this out, yo, I, I've been in the book of numbers, and the Holy Spirit been just speaking to me, girl, and, and we just, me and Pastor Matthew, we just got through it, and I got to the end of numbers, and then I heard the Holy Spirit just speak to me. It was like so clear. He was like, I don't got your number. <laughs> the best Bible study you ever got in the book of Numbers for the re I just reposted you. Here it is. I got eight minutes. Here it goes. The people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey. And they began to speak against God and Moses. And they said, why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? There's nothing here to eat and nothing to drink. And we hate this horrible manna. Manna was a supernatural food that God provided for his people as they walked through the wilderness. It was full of goodnesses. It was organic and gluten-free. It was awesome. Well, I'm not sure, but, but, but it was probably pretty dope, okay? <laughs> and, and, and so here's what the Bible says. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. For those of us that are new to our faith, this is not the nature of God throughout Scripture for the most time. This is what I would say is a biblical anomaly. But there was judgment to set some direction. But when the people came to Moses and cried out, we've sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. They said, pray to the Lord to take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. And then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. Now this is strange because the Ten Commandments tells the people that they should never ever make graven images or anything that would resemble something that would cause idolatry. And yet for all, God is telling him, make a replica of a snake, put it on a stick, tell the people to look at it and they'll be healed. Crazy, right? What's going on there? Can you imagine Moses and God having that conversation? Because he ends up, Moses made a snake out of a bronze and attach it to a pole then anyone who's bitten by a snake could look at it and the bronze snake is healed can you imagine that conversation god you you want me to put a snake on a pole yes moses <laughs> you put the snake on the pole god you want me to put a snake on a pole yes my son god literally turned moses into samuel l jackson Here's why sin causes death. Our original parents, Adam and Eve, were the first ones to get into that proverbial snake bite that launched us into the drama that we're still dealing with today. And so what we learn is our financial problems that we get into, the drug problems that we get into, the marriage problems that we get into, the, the relational problems that we get into, are all the snake bites that God is trying to prevent us getting into. And so he provided a remedy for the events that all snake-bitten people, all they had to do was look at a snake on a pole and they would be healed. See, the Bible teaches us that sin has put us all under the condemnation of death. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life is there anybody in this house that's glad 
that you met Jesus, that you got saved, that you didn't have to do it by your works. You didn't have to do it by your strength. You didn't have to do it because of your last name. But Jesus saved you, raised you, made you whole, set you on the right track. Let me close. See, God's remedies are always supernatural <laughs> because we mess it up. Supernatural is God's idea, not man's. And God's ideas are always simple. Man, salvation ain't hard. If you're here today, if you haven't put your faith and trust in Jesus, you don't have to overcomplicate it. I guarantee you, you put your faith and trust in Jesus today, you're going to be like, do I save 15% or more on my car insurance too? That was... It's speedy, it's salvific, and it's sure. But here's where we got to close out. Ben, come on out, because we're about to have church. When you hear the preacher do that, you know you're about to have church. And when they shake the mic a lot, you know you got to. Come on, everybody going to have to be black in Jamaica tonight. Y'all looking too cute on me. I need you to put on a stank face praise. You know when you That kind of praise in a minute, okay? Don't get boozy on me. Here's what the key is. The snake was on the stick, but the stick had to be lifted up. Too many of us want to eye level Jesus. But if the solution to your problems were eye level, you wouldn't be in the drama that you're in right now, would you? If you're ever going to get out of what you're in, you're going to have to lift your eyes up unto a Savior that's able to deliver you. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Now, here's where I, I got to let you know, God doesn't always remove the snakes. And too many of us are praying the wrong prayers. God, get these snakes out of my neighborhood. Get these snake friends away from me. Get these drugs and all this stuff. God is not always into removal. He's into remedies. There's nothing that can bite you that God doesn't have a remedy for. There's no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing that you can get into that God can't get you out of. But it all depends on where you're going to look. If you look to your own ability, your own strength, your own willpower, you're going to fail. But if you lift up your eyes to the hills from where your help comes from, I'm going to tell you that God will do something great in your life. Because he's the God that specializes in taking us from shipwrecks and two snake bites to sick people to give us supplies so that we'll know that he's our savior. So here's how it started. Here's how you can read this theologically through your Bible. The Bible begins with people looking at something that God told them not to take and it plummeted them into sin. Our first parents, Adam and Eve. All throughout the middle of the Bible, it's God saying, look to me, look to me, come to me, all the ends of the earth, look to me and you'll be saved. Until we get down to Hebrews, where the author tells us, let us run with patience. Yeah, 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 yeah. The race which is set before us. Look into who? Not to your neighbor, not to Oprah. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. Not to Jay-Z. But you got to look to Jesus. And if you do, you're going to finish. Because he is the author. And he is the finisher. 